quite often I get business leaders saying, life's too fast, changing too quickly. I want off. Well, sorry, you can't say stop the world. I want to get off. You have to adapt. For many, that involves much more than added technical skills. My personal belief is that mental training is necessary. My guest today is also a firm believer in mental training. He specializes in an executive and peak performance coaching. He's an entrepreneur owner of multiple businesses. Oh, and he competes in swimming at a national level. I'm exhausted before we start. So let's go meet the man whose mission is to coach and inspire people to lead inspired lives. Welcome, Brian Bergford. Hey, Malcolm. Thank you. I appreciate you having me come on with you this fine morning. It's, it's, good, to, it's good to interact with people right now, you know? Well, <laughs> I quite agree. Great. But you're, you're sitting there in the sunshine in Denver, Colorado, <laughs> mind, and it's a bit cold here in Northeast England. But never mind. Let's put some um, life into uh, people's lives. Brian, I said in my opening piece that you believe the training of the mind is key to managing this fast accelerating world. What's your thinking there? Yeah, one of the things that it's really, really, really important to understand, I believe, is that the faster the world goes and the faster business goes, the more people tend to think um, they need to rev up, right? They have to go faster. And I think that that's actually a huge mistake. Um, The faster things go, the more you need to be able to get grounded and bend time psychologically, you actually need to slow time down. And so you have to be more anchored in peace than ever before. And I do believe this is a function of mental spiritual training. Uh, Otherwise what happens is you just run too hot for too long and you either a burn out yourself and or uh you know suffocate the people around you or you just can't lead well and provide the level of stability that your people are going to so desperately need especially in this time Mm. i i just had a hint there maybe you've been talking to my wife and you talked about suffocate the people around you (laughs) (laughs) we we had a little uh free recording yeah (laughs) yeah i can quite imagine look i want to quickly get into delivering some valuable viewer benefits so tell us about how to boost productivity by taking advantage of as you say two underutilized and simple rituals sure uh well, in, this, in the spirit of the season that we're in, I think what I might give you is um, this acronym. So it's going to be more than two. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we're hey. going to bonus day. Great, um, Great value. <laughs> you know, when we talk about personal protective equipment and PPE, just the climate we're in right now, uh, I have a little bit different uh, wording to go with that, though. The, the first thing to really maximizing productivity with just simple habits and plans. I don't think this is going to be news to anybody watching this, but you know, for us all to get a reminder from time to time is important. The first one is planning and really scheduling weekly planning time into your calendar and then holding yourself to it religiously. Um, This goes back to what we were talking about a moment ago. The faster the world and business moves, the faster people try and keep up. And I think that that really takes you out of your grounding. And what's needed more than ever is the ability to slow down, to carve out time to do things like planning and it's just critically important, like set yourself up for success. And if you're not planning, just kind of running by the seat of your pants, you can do that. I mean, (laughs) we're all free people, but not necessarily the best way to go. The second uh, P in that would stand to me for preparation. Um, Preparation is the work that we all do before you do the actual work. So in other words, this is about setting the stage so you have the appropriate and necessary resources at your disposal when it's time to hit center stage in life and business and sports and whatever it is that's your center stage. So uh, preparation, getting things lined out ahead of time, not waiting till the day of. And going by the seat of your pants is, I, I think you can tell, in my opinion, not the best way to go. I also don't believe in analysis paralysis. You, you know, we're not talking about making making excuses not to move forward, but not going ahead so fast that we forget to plan. And it's that Abraham Lincoln quote, you know, if I had whatever it was like Mm. six hours to cut down a tree, I'd spend the first 
four or five hours sharpening the axe. Yeah. And then the third one, the E is for eliminate, just basically pulling out all the unnecessary variables and things that you discovered through your planning and preparation that you're like, this doesn't absolutely have to be there. There's a great quote. Um, I'm going to butcher it so you can <laughs> look it up after the show, but it's something along the lines of, <clears throat> Perfection isn't achieved when there's nothing more to add. It's when there's nothing else to take away. Um, so I think eliminating, so that's PPE. And then a bonus thing that I would throw in is meditation, mm -hmm. contemplation, however people want to frame that up, prayer, I don't know. But you know, meditating before you do the first two, before you do the planning and preparation, it just can really provide a mental reset, clear the cash, um, really create the clarity and space you need before you uh, plan and prep. And so you can do that a lot more effectively if you've got that out of the way and um, really just exponential benefit, I believe, from even preparing for your preparation. And I'm talking, and I'm typically working with people that are action taking, type A go getters, achievers, and they generally take action too fast. And so that tends to be the people that I'm speaking to, not the folks that can't get off dead center. So that's a different conversation. Mm. I, I like that PPE analogy. That's great. But I like also clearing the cash. And I'm presuming that C C A C H E cash. <laughs> yes. yes. C -A, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I thank you. For, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> C A C H E. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I've got that now. I've got that now. But I like that one. Look, I notice on your website that you use the phrase executive athlete. Yeah. Are you saying successful business people have to be good at swimming like you or running? Or is the goal to be podium standard in your business performance? And if so, how do you help the average become winners? The, the truth of the matter is to me, the average never become winners. Um, they just don't. If a seemingly average person ever becomes a winner, uh, I believe that they just awaken something that was inside all along and it was dormant, but ever present within them. So uh, personally, I really love working with athletic entrepreneurs, professionals, because it just takes a certain kind of person to do that kind of thing, right? Like those people come with batteries included. It's not like pushing a limp noodle. I don't, listen, here's the deal. Like I, and this might come across as a little callous, but I just like, it's nobody else's job to motivate you, right? It's your job to motivate you. So if you're not motivated, like figure it out. Like nobody's coming to your rescue. You've got to find what turns you on, what feeds your spirit, what ignites your spark. You've got to get around people that bring the best out of you. Because at the end of the day, you have to live with the results of your motivation and inspiration and dedication or lack of it. So I really don't think average people become winners. I think that um, people are winners or they're not. And sometimes you just have to put yourself in a different environment that demands more of you and you'll surprise yourself if you're in a dark place or you're just not feeling too up on life, not feeling a tremendous amount of confidence. Sometimes you've got to do something that kind of jolts you out of that commonplace day-to-day uh, -day workings, and you will find completely new levels, and um, you'll discover something inside and levels that you didn't know that you had. Mm. I, I'm totally again with you on that one, and I've discovered my inspiration or the spark because since lockdown obviously we haven't been anywhere but i've been all around the world meeting people like yourself and you surprising how that really sparks you just you know half an hour an hour on a zoom chat with as i say with people like yourself now the pandemic has changed lots of things in the business world and mental health and well-being is now so important across the whole of a company so let's assume a ceo is watching this and says brian Come and get my team into podium shape. What would be your approach and workflow to such a project? Great question. <clears throat> First of all, I think that the CEO can't create and isn't responsible for creating mental health and well-being in his or her people. And I think it's really important for people to understand that up front. I, I do think that person can, however, create that within him or herself and then create a supportive environment, an atmosphere, a culture, if you will, that makes these types of things more accessible easily accessible to their people. We're responsible for creating environments and also creating it within ourselves. Um, so my first order of business, honestly, in that type of a situation, it 
<laughs> you know, if somebody's calling me in like, hey, I need you to help work with my people, get them up to speed, and I'm not getting what I need out of them. And sometimes there's some fr real frustration there. And my first order of business is just understanding where the CEO is at himself, right? And then digging in to find out more about the culture and the values of the organization. There's got to be tremendous clarity here. There's got to be tremendous clarity here. And I, I think the next thing then is helping that leader effectively impart these themes uh, and, and communicate them to team members, get buy-in from them, and then create cohesion across the organization. The final part of the cycle, actually, to me, is uh, getting right in there with the individual team members to help them powerfully connect to, embody the healthy values and the habits of the organization, as well as just being an effective kind of spreader. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a loaded word right now, but like a super <laughs> spreader <laughs> of healthy, healthy culture and environment. Um, it's, it's all about like, what are you bringing to the table and um, what are you helping inject into the organization and to other people? And we can all be a catalyst for, you know, tremendous change and things that are profoundly transformational, or we can be kind of a cog in the wheel uh, and in the gears, so to speak. So Obviously, I'd encourage people to do the former. Yeah. Now, just before we move on, Brian, uh, that mythical CEO I was talking about, I hope he's taken down your URL that's on the screen behind me. And talking about visiting your site, tell me about the free app that visitors to the site can download. What does it do and who does it do it for? Sure. Uh, so the Bergford Performance Systems app is really something that I, just, I designed for high performing people who are intrigued by mental training, psychological strategy. There's a ton of high value material courses, videos, audio files, PDFs, etc. And I just pulled them together and curated them, made them available for free. So it's really a no brainer for people that are interested in that. And People, if, if you want to access that, just hop on the Bergford Performance Systems website, join my email list. That's really where I stay in communication with people, um, stay in touch, deliver performance tips, et cetera. And when they do that, they'll automatically be sent a link where they can download the app. Um, I also have a perf my performance posse. <clears throat> And that's a little bit more, it's quite a bit more in depth. That's a monthly subscription service. I basically deliver exclusive content via the app to subscribers of that. And these videos and audio files and PDFs are basically like my top of mind performance strategies that I'm also using with my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about that. Mm, excellent. Now, Brian, um, it's sanitized crystal ball time. So if you could get it out, please, you know, <laughs> as you say, it's a fast changing world. We'll never go back to the old normal. And suddenly many will get left behind along the way. For many, what to do is complex and puzzling. For those leaders who want to survive and indeed thrive over the next five years, give me three things that they should focus on doing, changing or adopting to ensure that they're not just survivors, but achievers. Sure. So picking three, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> picking three, uh, number one would be adopting just a mindset of adaptability and resilience. Um, stop, you know, having this obsessive need to know everything that's going to happen next. Nobody knows. <clears throat> the one thing we do know is like the old Robert, I think it was Robert Schuler said this, um, but and wrote a book by the title, Tough Times Never Last, But Tough People Do. So a, a mindset of adaptability and resilience, I believe, is absolutely key. Number two, uh, connect with your people, especially if you're a leader in business. Everybody is a leader, whether they realize it or not, because they have influence. And so I say, connect, especially with your people that are under your care better than you ever have before. Um, because in times like this, where things are really tough, trauma and crisis they're handled far more effectively by the human psyche. And frankly, productivity is just radically elevated when people feel deeply connected to other people as they're going through it. And especially people they're working for, that just creates this cohesion that you can't get any other way. Um, and then number three would just be ruthlessly honest <clears throat> with yourself about what changes you need to make, right? Um, you can get away with denial in good times, but it will kill you in tough times. And so some people will kind of stick to protecting their 
ego and they just don't want to have to maybe really dive in and face something and they'll skirt around the issue. But I'm, I'm telling you, um, and this is just my opinion, so I could be wrong. Humbly, I think my opinion is correct. You got to be ruthlessly honest with yourself. And we're not talking about beating yourself up for things that you have or have not done. Absolutely not. I just believe that Honesty is really important right now. Transparency, we're seeing a lot of that demand for transparency from people. And we'll tell other people, you're, they're not being transparent. And we rail against the system and everything else. I'm like, you're, you're not even honest with yourself. So I don't, I don't know if you have a place to really get on other people. And this goes for all of us. I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I'm talking to myself here too. So <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm just as bad. It is, and, and I do like that saying, by the way, uh, and I recall a time when here in the northeast of England, we were managing an ice hockey team and we used to play all the music before they, they went onto the ice. And one of the songs we would play, when the tough gets going, that, you know, and the, yeah, and they would go onto the ice and beat the hell out of the competitors. <laughs> Look, Brian, like like you, we've worked, we've worked with many high performers over the years, and I've also been struck that most have some common traits. Well, the ones that last the pace do. They have confidence, but are not bombastic. They have a willingness to always learn, and they have a purpose in life. Are there any others you can add or subtract from this? Mm. I like what you put there. I love that you mentioned confidence without being bombastic. I think true confidence is actually characterized by subtlety and calm. Um, insecurity masquerading as confidence just manifests as big bombastic kind of over the top behaviors. Um, so I totally agree with you there. You mentioned willingness to learn. Mm. Um, you know, I love that. I would really encourage people to not only be willing to learn and to grow, but to strive for true transformation. That's the real work. You know, um, that's the real work is to really strive for transformation and be willing to go through that because it's just a very different process than this, like, let's just grow a little bit, you know. Um, transformation is what changes history, um, whether it's your personal family history, whether it's history on, on the world, world stage. So I think that that's, um, that's a big one for me. Uh, having a purpose, you know, indispensable, yeah. Someone with a really, really clear mission is going to have completely different presence and impact on those around them than someone without that level of clarity and passion. Um, also, the best performers, you know, I've just found they want to create and contribute way beyond themselves. They don't revel in their own glory. They don't need the credit for everything. They've learned that actually empowering other people and watching them grow and get the credit is far more rewarding. Uh, whenever it's primarily about you, uh, you've already kind of reduced your capacity in a massive, massive way for having great impact in the world. Um, you got to be connected to something bigger than yourself. And that's only possible when you're working to empower others and then get the heck out of their way and let them step up and shine. Um, I think that's so important. That's not something that I did well early on in my leadership career, if you will. And it's something, you know, we're all growing and transforming and, and striving to become more. Um, but in the beginning, I was not good at that. And I thought, you know, as being a leader, you know, you know, people work for me, people look up to me, they look to me for answers. And that's basically, basically switched 180 degrees just through some <clears throat> catastrophic things that happened due to my own <laughs> over-reliance yeah. on completely inaccurate ways of looking at leadership. And so really putting people out in the forefront and, hey, if they want to take credit for an idea, have added. I want them to be part of that process and be equipped and empowered to go out and shine. And that's that's where I think you start to recognize you're really maturing as a leader. Mm, excellent. Yes, I told you. Now, just before I move on to my last question, Brian, once again, we'll remind people to go along to the URL behind me there, and in particular, download your free, get access to your free app. Brian, I like to give all my guests three wishes. It's sort of like a, a Disney thing, you know. If I were to give you three <laughs> wishes for the adoption the adoption of the acceptance of mental training as you offer in the business workplace, what would those three wishes be? Oh, <clears throat> well, thank you for my three wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this my whole life. This is awesome. Um, for, for that specific 
uh, topic, I'd say number one is that just people would buy in and go all in on this concept of getting your own mind right first. Uh, if you're a business leader in any capacity, you know, your ability to thrive and, and generate growth and not only growth, but sustainable growth in your company and your professional endeavors, it's going to be capped by your willingness to be and model strength and stability. So that's number one. Number two, uh, recognize <clears throat> that the most important work is always done between the ears. It's always done between the ears. You know, this is where the game is won or lost. You, yeah, you have to work hard, right? That's a given. Everybody knows that. But this day and age, there's plenty of people working harder than ever. And I just believe that the great separator is going to be the strength of people's and their team psychology. Um, Is it properly trained and conditioned or not? You know, there's a great movie called Man on Fire and Denzel Washington's character is working with somebody actually swimming nonetheless. And um, a young girl that he's a bodyguard for and she goes, uh, I'm tough, Creasy, I'm tough. Uh, When when she's at swim practice and he goes, tough? No such thing as tough. There's trained and there's untrained which are you. And we have to look at our minds that same way. And um, if you are properly trained and conditioned, that's where you and your people are going to get an edge over the competition. Uh, Third wish. This is fun. I love this. Uh, Take care of yourself and other people. You know, for yourself, make sure that you're getting world-class coaching if you want to have world-class impact. It's just helpful to have other eyes in the situation. I just, you know, for example, put on this posture trainer today and whenever I slouch, it like zaps me. (laughs) (laughs) And it's not unpleasant. It just gets your attention. It brings awareness to something that just kind of unconsciously will go back to old postures and old habits. And so I think that making, you know, you know, a lot of times coaching people, I like, I don't need a coach. I'm like, really? Because the best in the world have coaches. Please find me somebody going to the Olympics next year that doesn't have a coach. Um, you know, and just with connecting with others, make sure you're more deeply than ever connected to them. We talked about that earlier, but just surface level connection, Malcolm, I just don't think it's going to work any longer. It's not going to cut it. People need to know that you see them that you see them, that you feel them, that you're present for them. And maybe you could get away with doing surface level stuff in the past. I think that's going to bite people in the rear end uh, more than ever before. But if they put that to work for them, it can just create such a powerful effect that's, again, impact them, the people around them, their community. Um, It's a really big deal, you know, especially when the proverbial poop hits the fan, a lot of times one of the most beautiful things about it is at some point we're rocked to back to the foundation and back to the important things. And we get away from some of the silly, stupid things that we become obsessed with. And we just like foundation connection, right. Um, Providing good leadership, being grounded yourself, all the things that we've talked about here. I, and I, I hope that, you know, some of what I went through in there um, wasn't just rambling and was, (laughs) it's going to prove helpful for people. Brian, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Brian, I'm Bergford. Brilliant. Thank you for a fantastic uh, interview. I'm off now to clear my cash uh, before my wife, <laughs> before my wife clears the cash. Thanks for the great interview. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Malcolm. Uh, likewise, my friend, and I hope you have a magnificent rest of your day. 